And just when you thought you didn't have any energy left, here comes the harmonic oscillator. But what can you expect from this potential? <laughs> Let's find out. In this question, what we're looking for are compute the expectation values of x, the position, momentum, position squared, momentum squared, for the states psi 0 and psi 1, the first excited state, by explicit integration. B, check the uncertainty principle for these states. Makes sense. We already calculated the expectations. Let's find the standard deviation. And then part C, compute the expectation value of T and V for these states. Is there some what you would expect? Here, that's or the uh, expectation of t is the expectation of kinetic energy which we know we could write in terms of momentum and v as well you've seen that before so we will see how to do that for the state psi naught and psi one we have n equals zero and n equals one which will be denoted in blue and red respectively as we've seen here in the statement of the wave functions so here we have psi naught, the ground state, and then psi 1, the first excited state. So along with state, the statement of the wave functions, we do have a couple substitutions that were suggested by the author to help the obnoxious writing required. The substitutions were alpha for this normalization constant, and xi, the curly q here, for the uh, arguments on the x squared and the x variable itself. And as you see, it makes this wave function a whole lot nicer to write. Uh, well, debatable uh, based on what substitution you want. So I was the one suggested. So here, we also have a root two here from the normalization constant. And here you have m, omega, h bar, and an x. So you have a, a xi function with the exponential as well, and the alpha. So those are your two big differences. Just be aware that with the change of variable for xi, the integrals will also have to have a change of variable. Just be aware. All right, so last question. We uh, use the geometric intuition for integrals being even and odd to save time, and we will do that here again. Couple this with Ehrenfest theorem, it will save us a lot of time. So for n equals zero, the expectation value of x, well, we note the magnitude of a function squared is, even if it's odd, goes to an even. But we know that x is odd. So the product of this and the square yields an odd integrand over symmetric bounds, so we're zero. And then Aaron Fest theorem allows us to take the time derivative of the expectation value of x, multiply it by m. But since x is zero, we're zero here too. Same here for the first excited state. And as you see, that saves us a lot of time. And you want to save the time while you can. The rest will not be so quick and so clean, as we'll see very soon. So moving on to the expectation value of x squared, I color-coded the variable so that we could make the appropriate substitution with psi and so on. And right here, we'll see that x squared and dx are x-dependent, but we wrote the wave function in terms of xi. So there's our alpha squared from uh, psi star psi, and we have e with xi, but instead of divided by 2, since we have two copies of them, we have minus xi squared. But if we want to do that, then we have to substitute in x squared in terms of xi, which is what we have here in the green. And of course, dx, you need to do a substitution and so we see the green substitution in there. And again, uh, be aware that these substitutions are going to be painful if you're not careful and you don't put in, say, the square root factor here that can join with that one. Just be aware, the algebra will catch up to you. So, um, yeah, just note that the psi squared gives us the alpha squared, so that turns that uh, alpha uh, which is originally to the one-fourth power into a one-half power. And that allows us to tuck the, uh, that into the square root. And that's what we see in the next line. Here, we have a square root all from this thing here. And if that's a square factor, you put it inside here to make it a square factor. And then you see we also have a factor inside. So if we were to combine these all to a power, that would be to the 3 halves power. 
or the square root of the power cubed, which is what we condense it down here to. The reason why is because the constants from alpha can be pushed in and canceled away, as we see here. Okay, the 2 comes from uh, doubling the integral but splitting the bounds in half. So we have 0 to infinity instead of negative infinity to positive infinity so that we can format with the uh, uh, book ta the table in the books on these Gaussian integrals. Okay, so once we do that and we format, you see we get this blue bracket here. So we get the square root of pi, 2 over 1, and then 1 half to the third because 2n plus 1 up there where n equals 2. Um, so yeah, just plug it away, or excuse me, where n equals 1. Because 2n equals 2. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, cancel away. Plug it in. If you need help with the form matching, send me a message and we'll figure it out. But we have two factors of 2. And that cancels with two factors of that uh, 1 over 2. So we'll have one factor, one half left. The square root of pi cancel with that fraction there. So 2 pi, pi, 2. And this reduces to 1. Leaves us with this here. And we get a nice we get a nice result actually um be aware that these kind of fractional powers of h over m omega or times h bar omega they're going to happen frequently so that's a good self check for you in the realm of the harmonic oscillator now momentum on the other hand is a little bit different since it is a differential operator we need to be careful on the substitutions so knowing that this is the momentum operator we can't just have psi star psi. We have to have the operator taking the derivative on a, a non-conjugated uh, function here and then multiply in the conjugated function. So be aware, that's going to get messy quick. So much like last time, now that we have this kind of set up in our substitutions, we'll go ahead and substitute in anything that has an x variable into the form with psi. And so we do that here with the dx in the uh, derivative and the dx in terms of the uh, integrand. So be aware, you're going to have to cross match and be careful with that. Please, please, please be careful. It gets messy quick. Just be aware. Um, now we have to clean up this integral because uh, we know that we have everything in terms of the uh, appropriate units. So we take the reciprocal of this, multiply it out. We take h bar over i, square that, you get negative h bar squared. So we see that all in the big parentheses here. Much like last time, alpha to the 1 fourth goes to alpha to the half since we're squaring it. And that allows us to put it as a square root again. And then we have this square root h bar over m omega from the dx that we substituted in to the integral. And so we push that out. Why? Okay, well now we get to actually cancel away some stuff and what we do is we combine the blue and the green into here while we take the derivative uh, a d squared d psi squared of this exponential. Let's be aware that the first derivative due to chain rule creates a product rule. So we actually have two functions here with another factor of psi. Then that product rule needs to be taken the derivative again for the second derivative. So this is how we end up building a polynomial here in the green bracket of xi squared minus 1 after we factor out, of course. Once we factor out, we combine this e to the negative xi squared over 2 with this one, and that's what we see here. We have a factor of 2 in there, so we don't have the 1 half anymore. Be aware, the derivatives will be messy. You might be better off doing that on a side sheet of paper just to clean it up. Once we're here, let's go ahead and note that we canceled an h bar here and here, so we're on the left with m omega, as we see here. And then we can combine this square root with that square root, cancel out this whole thing with the m omega h bar there. Woohoo! We like cancellations. It makes our life easy. Combine that down into what we see here with this fraction. Okay. And when we evaluate the integral using the same tables, split it in half, double it, because we know that this makes an even times an even, which is an even function. So we're good there. Note that both of these have a uh, square root of pi on it, factor it out, and cancel it, which is what we showed here with the lines. And then we know that 1 half minus 1 gives us a negative 1 half. The two negatives cancel, and then we're left with m h bar omega over 2. Again, these combinations in a fractional form keep popping up. So now that we've seen how to kind of do some of the dirty work on this example, I'm going to use a similar method 
but without doing all the kind of clunky substitutional work for the case of n equal one, which is what we'll see in order to save time. As previously stated, we're going to use the same method, and of course, with this, we're going to get some very similar results. Um, so let's see what we get. We have x squared, run it through, except now we have uh, xi squared because of the psi star psi, being that we had a psi times the exponential. So be aware we have an extra factor there. Plug everything in, simplify it down after the substitution. Note the only difference here is that we have a xi to the fourth instead of a xi squared. So our n goes to 2 n equal 4, so n equals 2. And we see that this is what our plugged in form is from the integral tables. And now we just simply cancel away and get some nice, you know, simplifications up here. Uh, this simplifies, this bracket simplifies down to 3 pi over 8. This 4 simplifies down with this here after the cancellations with this uh, xi substitution and this alpha substitution into these two fractions here purposely made these two fractions so we could cancel the pi root pi root pi and cancel down that four and the four and eight lead to a two which is what we see here in the answer and again we get h bar over m omega for the positional uh expectation so if we do the same thing on the momentum expectation sub it all in evaluate the derivatives already starting with the polynomial or product rule here so our polynomial is of even bigger stature here after uh, rather after factoring out the exponentials and multiplying across. You see how we had a square and a one last time. Now we have a four and a two for the powers. So we're going to have to split up this integral and do twice the form matching for e to the four or xi to the four where we can take this form here and then xi squared which we could take the last form that we had for uh, the expectation of uh, x squared on the uh, ground state function. So you can use old results again, it does help. But as you see, we have a factor square root pi, square root pi, cancel, cancel. Wonderful down across, three fourths minus three halves. Well, of course, you know, you're gonna get some problems there. So we get a uh, minus three halves once we simplify, um, or minus three fourths once we simplify, excuse me. The negative and the negative cancel, the 2 and the 4 cancel down to a 2, and yet we're stuck again with the uh, 3 in the numerator times m h bar omega. So now that we see these familiarities, note the difference in the factors from n, go, n starting at 0 as it goes to 1. We keep getting bigger on these expectation values, and we'll see how that impacts our results very soon. And by very soon, I mean now, because we want to uh, calculate the standard deviations and then find their products. So here, handling it in the same notation as above, where blue is for the ground state or n equals zero, and red is for the first excited state or n equals one, we see that we have our expectation values here. Let the algebra work its way through. We get a square root, no big deal. Here, same thing, we get another square root. Note that the m and omega are in opposite positions here of h bar in the fraction. So you multiply them together, you see they cancel, cancel, cancel. We like to simplify, 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 and we get the square root of h bar squared over 2 squared. So take the square root of both numerator and denominator, you get, well, h bar squared over 2, which is at the uncertainty limit. How close is that? How convenient do we have to be to set this up using this method? That is wild. Now, look at the comparison, now that it's all on one page, between the standard deviation of position for the first excited state. You see we have h bar divided by 2m omega, h bar divided by 2m omega, but with a factor of 3. Here you do it again, a factor of 3 for the uncertainty in the momentum. Push them together. And how would we have guessed that we're a factor of three bigger than the one above it, or rather below it since it's the ground state? You get what I mean. Either way, the uncertainty limits are matched, and uh, we're good to go here. Now let's go check out what we're looking for with those energy terms. As promised, finally on to the energy segment. Classically, we can write these kinetic and potential energies in terms of momentum and position respectfully. 
And so for the quantum case, we need to use the expectation values, which we already calculated. So here, if we recall that the total energy is the kinetic term plus the potential term, where T is kinetic, V is potential, then we have the total energy H, which is what we're asked to do when we combine them. Um, so here, the kinetic, which is 1 half mv squared, but we know that uh, we could substitute in uh, momentum squared here. So we see that our kinetic term is, apt, or not absolute value, expectation value of momentum squared over 2m. And then this is the potential that was given to us via being a harmonic oscillator. So we have 1 half m omega squared uh, with the expectation value of x squared. We're good there. So if we look at the results from what we found, p squared or rather this is the 1 over 2m that was the form statement there cool good by there uh, again we have our case by case basis here so just everyone's on the same page let's note here that the expectation value of p squared is the second fraction here and so we just simplify it down note that we get a 1 4th h bar omega again these are starting to pop up over and over again with the harmonic oscillator please don't be worried if you see these fractions coming up Again, we know that for the first excited state, we're going to be three times higher. That's been consistent for this whole question. So we have a nice self-check there. Do the same thing with the expectation value of x squared. Simplify it down. Cancel the m and omega term with the m and omega term in the denominator. Oop, sure enough, we get a 1 over 4 h bar omega and a 3 fourths h bar omega. So not only is this three times, well, the uh, potential is three times greater for N1 and the ground state, but notice that the potential and the kinetic split the energy. So what happens when we combine them? What is the total energy? Okay, and so if you add 1 fourth and 1 fourth after factoring out the H bar omega, you get a 1 half. And that is something we expect because that is the ground state energy for the harmonic oscillator. Real quick, we see that this is once again, three times E naught because we have three halves of h bar times omega, which is equal to E1. And so the trend here is that for the energy states of the harmonic oscillator, we know that En is equal to N plus one half in parentheses times h bar omega. So we did indeed verify the result that we found in our derivation. That is awesome. And of course, it's just the beginning of a wonderful journey. Until next time, happy learning.